Hello again, everyone. I have yet another amazing discovery to share with you. This will be the first video in an occasional new series about recreating ancient stone melting technology with high voltage, and it is also the very first video in current history which scientifically explains the mysterious knobs and holes linking all ancient structures from across every continent and known time period of Earth. Aside from yet another incredible mystery I've now solved and I'm physically applying, this kind of stone melting technology is important to rediscover and understand for many reasons, such as its natural durabilities, longevity, being extremely earthquake resistant and ultimately, so we too, can build safe structures that endure the tests of unfathomable time. Not only here on our planet, but perhaps someday, on other worlds which contain these basic rock-building materials in this solar system and beyond. Our journey back through time begins in the lab here, with learning about and understanding the basic effects of high-voltage, high-amperage plasma flowing through and around a few preliminary stone samples. We can see which types of rock deflect or absorb heated plasma, to get a better idea of their potential heating properties, because this will later become relevant in creating a stable high voltage process that warms the rocks evenly through, then keeps them from cracking while they cool down afterward. Only in extreme high voltage, high amperage plasma source, such as a spark gap lingam or water cooled spark gap tesla coil, can effectively heat large rocks in this way. So far, I've observed two primary electrode types being used to achieve these ancient melted rock effects, as heated plasma needs a good positive electrode connection within the stone to be the most effective in heating it from the inside out, and as not to have the plasma streams pulled entirely around the outside of the rocks and lose their heat or effectiveness. If you look closely, all of these seemingly round holes are actually square or hexagonal, as a round electrode will not be in efficient shape for this type of application, and these points are needed to facilitate plasma flow evenly on all sides of the electrode. As you can plainly see, all of these nubs and holes are at critical structural points where a heating process taking place would be the most effective. These nubs are then made in the stone afterward, like warm cake batter when their electrodes are pulled out, and any part of the wall or structure where these rough knobs are found would have further been covered by some other material, such as more stone or metal. From an architectural standpoint, these nubs would not have been visible in the finished product. Interestingly enough, this heating process can also be used to inflate a stone by blowing air into the electrode, as clearly seen in the example here furthering all kinds of new construction possibilities for our own cities and a stronger future. Now keep in mind, not all holes were for electrodes, though any holes that were needed during the heating process would usually either then have their electrodes pulled out, covered, plugged, or trimmed and remain in the stone. However, centuries of time has since eroded these lost metals, and micro heat fractures around these plugs have plainly exposed their hidden electrode locations for us to see today. Another interesting note is that the mysterious rods found in the queen's shaft of the Great Pyramid were actually unused electrodes. How or why they ended up in that location will still just have to remain a mystery. You can also determine if a stone has undergone a heat treatment of some kind by observing flaking or loss of material from microfractures that occurred long ago during the original heating process, but have now become very apparent after millennia of thermal expansion cycles, weather erosion, and other degradation spanning centuries of time. Also notice, floors require a lot more electrodes because not only does the ground absorb some of the voltage, it also absorbs the generated heat. 
This is why the floors of ancient structures have so many electrode holes and become the most degraded from microfracture damage over time. This heating process was used as well to help carve designs into stone surfaces. As you can see, for example, not only are electrode holes either always present, but most microfracture damage today will be more apparent around intentional or heavily carved areas. I've also discovered through my experiments that the electrode holes were not only used to carve heated rocks and meld them together, but they were also possibly used to make the stones lighter so they could be moved. In this configuration, the positive and negative electrodes are reversed for lifting, as the ground connection now instead helps dissipate accumulated positive charges within the rock, and a controlled or modulated positive charge above pulls the negatively grounded stone upwards, making it now reliably lighter and manageable. Thank you everyone for watching. I hope you'll like, subscribe, share, or donate to help support my incredible contributions towards science and our future. See you next time.